I'm sorry. I'm, I'd like to apologize. You know, I apologize last time I was here, but I'd like to do it again. Of course, the Titans win. <laughs> Because I didn't watch it, and I'm like, this is getting out of hand. I wrote 180, and then he got 360. He, he got 180 <laughs> big time. I think everybody, at one point, when Paul Kent's opened his mouth, wanted to be that tree. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what's even more beautiful is eating 60 points on <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Maron, what are you doing? Hey, like, comment, subscribe, share. Do everything you got to do, man. It goes a long way, trust me. You like my shirt? Get straight into the episode. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of League Lads. I am joined with Mr. Flexi, of course, as always. And we got our main man back, Fred. Shout out to Tanaka for last week for filling in for Fred. Um, as you all know what happened, I'll let you take it away. You can, you can have a few words with this. You want to send your love and, uh, to everyone that messaged you. So much people messaged us. And I do want to talk about Tanaka, how no, he's no, been stood down for four No, you can do that, and then we'll talk about Tanaka getting stood down. Yeah, Tanaka has uh, been stood down pending an investigation to fraudulent dragons activity. <laughs> Uh, if you know what we're talking about, is Brett Finesta announcing that Paul Ken has been stood down. So, that's so Tanaka's also been stood down and I'm back. Uh, I sort of had a disappearing act. I went MIA for a bit, but um, I'm back now. Um, if you guys don't know what happened, uh, my father passed away and um, it sort of happened really quickly. But we gave him a great send off and um, I think I'm ready to get back into it. And I just, yeah, want to say a big thank you to everybody f who sent me messages and um, sent their condolences to me. It really made a tough time a lot easier for me. Um, and the only time that I smiled was when the dogs, the, during that probably week period, is when the dogs pumped the night. So that was also really good. I know that was last week, but um, f sometimes the power of footy and the power of something so simple can make, it can turn your a frown upside down. And that's what happened to me. But... I just wanted to thank you, everybody, for sending their love and, and support, and it just made things a lot easier for me. Yeah, beauty. That's what we love to hear. I love you, Fred, always, as always. And um, I know you're get ready to get back into it, so let's get straight into it. Yeah, let's go. Right? First things first, the Bulldogs, they had a bye this week. Uh, Winston actually put up the result of that 100 game. 100-0, right? 100 nil. Unbelievable performance, boys. <laughs> no injuries. We'll just move on to the next no, one. someone still probably got injured. <laughs> <laughs> no, but listen, the talking point with the Bulldogs um, is to pine... Has, is trying to sue the Bulldogs, right? And we knew this last year. Like, we knew that, we, we knew who it was straight away. It was identified within the Bulldogs community, the fan base. They knew exactly who it was. And I'm gonna, I'll be honest with you, it made me kind of sad that it was him because he's a player that we always thought was just a born, born, born to be a Bulldog, um, put his heart on his sleeve, tr trained hard, worked hard on the field, was always ready to go whenever he got called up. And then, yeah, a few things happened and then now he's automatically turned his back on his boyhood club and ready to sue us. Now, my three cents is, I said this last year, I said if you're an athlete, you're a professional, uh, if you get paid to, to play the sport that you grew up loving, watching, being a part of, you don't have to go do your nine to five job, you don't have to clock into your shift, right? You should, you're already privileged. And I know people say, yeah, but they're humans and they work hard. Yeah, yeah, they're all, mate, it's all love and games, brother, but someone's earning five, three, four, five hundred, six hundred thousand a year. They're getting sponsorship deals. They're getting endorsements from this brand and they're building their own name and they're on TV and they have the ability to make children happy, make fans happy, the ability to impact their childhood club. You have all that, bro. I think if you get asked to train hard, you, you got to just shut the fuck up, really. I don't want to swear today, but... It really pisses me off how this person's going and suing the thing. Now, we don't know the full story, but I think it's pretty obvious. No, Someone, I think at this point we know the full story. Yeah, like he's never come out and said anything. That's why I have to say it's like an allegedly thing. But like, bro, like, it just pisses me off. Like, how, how are you? And even Braden Burns, he happened to Braden Burns. And he's not and, a peep. And he bloody took, no, no, he, he made a peep. He said, I'm not, I don't want any special treatment. You know, I want, I want whatever you guys think I have to do, I'll do. And what's the reason why they got Shout treated out like to this? Him. Huh? What's the reason why they got treated late like this? Late for training. Late for training. And this is a no, no, big thing. But yeah, there's late for training and you let them know. And there's late for training and you don't let them know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Brandon Burns went to training, said to Cameron Serraldo, I don't want any special treatment. Whatever you think has to happen, has to happen. You know what I mean? Took Again, it on the chin like a champion, yeah, bro. Yeah, took it on. That's the difference. I think, like, and look, I'm not... So this is just my opinion. You know, I'm th looking at someone that was barely getting picked in first grade, and is look and probably doesn't want to play league anymore. At a time where he should have been picked, like we would shambolic. Yeah, like, no, he got picked a week before. You yeah. know, he played against the Raiders at Magic Round, I believe. And, yeah. Um, but really wasn't getting picked as much as he should have, and probably thought that he's, like you know, 
he's not he's probably not earning as much as other players as well. And I think he's sort of this has happened to him and yeah, it would have been tough. I'm not gonna say it wasn't tough. Do I think they went too hard on him? No. Because if you listen to Braith and Asta, I, I remember listening to Braith and Asta talk about how they Ages used to ago. how they used to train, you know, the the, the young the, the dogs of war, you know what I mean? They would break you down Stay focused. Right, and, and all right, those. Down, right down to where you pretty much you don't want you, where you can't you have nothing left, and then they build you back up, and then that's why the dogs of war were so good because training was way harder than the actual games. You know what I mean? And this is a disciplinary thing. That wasn't discipline. That was just how they trained. You know what I mean? And they and generations and thousands of players have endured similar stuff. And you hear every former player that's there: Billy Slater, Brad Fittler. Like this is just another day. What he did was just another day in the office for them at training, okay? And I think he's probably thought, you know, probably seen the writing on the wall and wants to get a payday on his way out like that no one else has got. $4 million is a big ask. Yeah. I, I honestly think the dogs will settle it. Oh. I don't think they should. Yeah, they shouldn't. Because this, this makes the integrity of the way players train and the way teams train their players... It questions the integrity of them. It opens and the it door will change, to many things, It bro. opens the door to so many more lawsuits in Headaches. the future. This could kill the game if this wins. And that's why I want the dogs to fight them all the way. And I'm, I honestly think they'll win if they do fight it all the way. But I don't know if they will. I think it's the NRL as well. Like, you're, you're going yeah, to try and fight the NRL. You're not going to win. Yeah. The NRL has to defend the dogs here. And, and they to. will. And they definitely will. And, well, who knows? They're not the smartest tool. They don't, they're not the <laughs> sharpest tool in the shed sometimes, these guys. But... Look, I know they're very, they've been scared about HIAs this whole time and, and the repercussions in terms of, like, the legal repercussions of concussions and CTE and all this stuff that the sport may, may endure, which is why they've taken such massive and drastic measures to try and get it out of the game and punish players who inf inflict that sort of damage on other, you know, on, during a match. But this could, this incident, if, if Jackson wins could be an even bigger problem for the NRL because practically every NRL player has endured this and you're going to have the many more cases. Much. Yeah, and you're going to have many more cases of of this sort of incident happening and 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 these players suing they'll look at if it, it like, wins. They'll look at it, why would I play five years? Yeah. If I can for, just get paid for, for, for it now. For 800 grand. For, and I'll just get paid for it now. And get paid 4 million for all the suffering that I went through. In my opinion, the NRL is not a job. That you can't govern the, this, what clubs do, and how they tr the method they train professional they, athletes. No it's not a job. It's you not can't a compare it. You can't compare it to an office job Definitely. or a job on site. In my opinion, a job on site is way harder. Of course. In terms of, you have to do it every day. You have to do it. You're not. There's no real there's no enjoyment. There's no, there's, there's no real gratification you yeah, get from it. Exactly right. You know what I mean, you don't get to. You know you. You, as a tradesman, are not trying to put smile on, smiles on nah. people's faces. <laughs> Change lives. You're just... You're, Build you're, the house yeah, and move on. You're building a house. You're just trying not to get your bloody construction manager or <laughs> foreman fucking click it at you. you that's know what right. I mean? that's, that's, that, right. that's basically... You're trying to avoid frowns. You're not putting smiles on people's faces. These guys, they... they uh, it is a privilege. Obviously, it's a lot of work to get here. I'm not... I'm not no one is I mean? denying that. Yeah, no one's denying that, but... This is just a situation of someone that has endured something that everyone else has and thinks that they sh you know, didn't want to do something that in, in the rugby league world and professional sports world is normal. It's and, absolutely and because insane. he's trying to say that that's not normal, he's trying to say that the training regiment and, the, and the discipline a... system and the way that not just NRO, you go across the entire world to every professional sport and shit like this happens. And you're trying to say that that's not normal because you're comparing it to an office job or a regular job where you're not supposed to be put through stuff like this. And, and he's, that's, that's his NRL career done as well, bro. No one, no like, one is going to touch him. Apparently they tried to shop him and like, everyone's like, bro, you stay where you are. No, no one, one is going to touch him with a 10 foot pole. Yeah, and that's, that's the sad part of it. Now his career's ended and he has to look for something else. And if he, yeah. if he wins this money, it's, it's, he wins in his happy days. But just for me, bro, like you said, it is a privilege. And it's, bro, it's a privilege to wear the Bulldogs, to be part of the Bulldogs. And I know they were down in the mud and whatnot, but still a privilege, still a big club with big history. they got legends of the game that have conquered so much in the game. Like, people just don't, under, like, I don't know how these, some athletes think, but for me, it's just rubbish. And the last thing I'll say on this is, 
<coughs> you can really see the difference with having these rotten potatoes, whatever you want. These rotten players that come into the team because all you need is two, three of them and you're finished. You can have a 50-man squad. Look if, you have two, if you have two or three of these blokes that just kind of grab this guy and grab that guy with them, it, it just spreads. It spreads, spreads, spreads and now you're screwed. The other bloke next to you is not tackling for the other guy. No one's putting the effort. These people are rocking up late to training, yada, yada. You can see the difference now. And now we, we need to like look at Seraldo and understand that he's... Deleting all this rubbish, throwing it in the red yeah, bin, not look, the yellow one. He's doing a Jose, bro. <coughs> he's doing a Jose. Look at these players in two, three years. If, where they play, if they play. How they play, if, if they, they play. play. No, nah, but like, it's, it's in all seriousness, like now you can see the difference in the Bulldogs. Like even going to, going to play at Amy Park against Melbourne and like being the better team. It doesn't fucking happen that often. And if it happens, it's, Melbourne has a ton of injuries. Or like, we've got Penrith coming up and like, I'm not confident that we're going to win. But I'm, I'm like, I know I've, for once we're probably not going to get pumped. Yeah, but I feel it's like I, f- I really, sorry, I really feel like it's going to be like one of those like proper rough games. Penrith will probably most likely win, but I'm confident of my team now. I can look at my team and say, okay, we can do this. We're going to do that. So it's a big difference, big culture change, and this is exactly what we want. And I'm just happy that there's no more rubbish in the club. And um, yeah, good luck to them. And I hope the Bulldogs and the NRL fight this all the way to the end because if it, they don't, oh my days, it's going to be, yeah, it's, it's going to gonna be, gonna be a, bad. It's going to be a bloodbath, bro. But yeah, <laughs> of you, can, you can tell from all these, getting rid of all these whingy players, look at how the dogs play now, huh? In the top eight. I can't mm. believe it. Oh, we're in the top eight now. Hey, let's talk about the top eight. Bulldogs are in the top eight. Flexi, listen, I know, I know we're going to bag you a little bit here. You've won three in a row. You're going to go on to the fourth. But listen, it feels good, bro. Bro, uh, if you told me we'll top eight after eight games, okay. after the, <laughs> the rough eight games that we had, if you looked on the schedule before the season, you're like, brother, Parramatta, full strength, South Sydney, Bloody the, the sharks, sharks, Melbourne, Melbourne, Roosters. Like bro, uh, the one easy game we had was the Titans. I know that South Sydney was supposed to be an easy game, <laughs> but you but watch, you look at it in the preseason. You're like, bro, what the hell, man? What is no, but this? even South Sydney, no matter how, like, and they won anyway. But me as a Bulldogs fan, when we play South Sydney, I know we're not gonna win. I know somehow we're gonna get robbed. Somehow something's gonna happen. Yeah, that was like, bad. Or something we're gonna do is gonna be stupid and we're gonna lose the game off it. Something somehow, some way. But we're in the top eight now. It's uh, what is it? First time I think in since 200, 200 Yeah, that's that's the last year we made the eight in twenty fifteen or sixteen. The last time, which is insane. And that was the last time we've been top eight after this point. Because that's eight four yeah eight years, bro. That's actually insane. So shout out to Rando for those for those facts because we would never know for <laughs> for Rando. But it feels good to be in the top eight. I feel like no one should celebrate anything right now. Just be happy for where no, we I'm are. No, I'm just happy with how we're playing, man. 100%. I'm appreciating the fact that I have, we have three wins out of eight games. Or four wins? No, three wins, but a bye. But we should have had yeah. more. Like, there was games. Yeah, I know, I know. We should have had six. We're this close. We should have had I mean? five, game, five wins at least. And that's a big big change, bro. So, I'm very proud of the boys at the Bulldogs. I'm excited to watch them play this and week. The easy games are coming. I hope they're easy. I don't like getting cocky or They're confident. not easy. No game is easy. But no the game. easier ones, yeah. you know... But that's my, my problem as well. If it's an easier game, do we switch off? That's the number test for us. Well, the one the one team that we played that was struggling legitimately, which is the Titans, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? We disposed of them pretty well. Yeah, we just pumped them. Um, but they've been playing better. Yeah, they, they look better. We, we might get into them. But you know who I want to talk about? Um, Anzac Day, big game, history, culture, heritage, tears, people that fought for us, yada, yada, yada. You know, all the good stuff, all the lovely stuff. Roosters, Dragons. Now, listen, bro, I sat down and I was like, I'm going to watch this game because it's always a banger. It's always a banger. True or not? Flexi, it's always like, wow, this is football heritage, like NRL heritage. It, it, it's one of the games of the year where you're like, all right, this is going to be packed and it's going to be Blood rough. Blood buff, rough. And it's going to be proper football. You really can't predict. If I gave you $100 right now, you say, I don't know. I don't Every, know. Everyone, everyone, know. everyone circles this game on the calendar, bro. It's beautiful. And I love it. And you know what's even more beautiful is eating 60 points on the- <laughs> <laughs> After the first five minutes, I'm like, oh, the Dragons came to play. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm like, ooh, I'm like, I told Johnny, I tipped, the dra- I tipped the Roosters, but I'm like, I told Johnny, I tipped the Dragons, I tipped the Dragons. Anyway, Tanaka's been stood down for these reasons. He's not showing up because um, they ate 60. Nah, shout out to T, he's at work. And he was there, right? Eh? And he was there, and he's yeah. like, boys, I don't know how he's ate 66 against Newcastle. I'm like, bro, listen. And at least I had something to celebrate. We literally went there, and the most we could celebrate was a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> And we didn't even get that many. I think the first one was in the second half. <laughs> and we cheated. Yeah, we got the penalty. I was I was cheering every time they went right, and then they got ta- and then Jake Preston tackled him. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> fuck, he's good. And then they went left and scored. Uh, but yeah, man. But now that was funny, bro. That like, was sixty Joey points. Joey Manu and Sam Sam. Shout out to Sam Walker. He the he they got. He had his best game of his career. He stepped up a lot, bro. Even the, like honestly, when he's played this season, he stepped it up a lot, bro. 
And now, like, we've, we'll talk about Kiri retiring, but players like that, I think they need time. You need to trust them. But we've seen his talent from the beginning anyway. Yeah, man. Like, I don't know why he got dropped last year. And I think... They're understanding. They're starting to realise that was right, probably a mistake. It wasn't his fault, man. It was never his fault. And he's a champion player. Pound for pound, he's a tough kid, bro. He is, He man. might be an absolute midget compared to all these other players. Skinny as well, like not a big build. But not he a big plays frame. way bigger than his size. And that's a good player that you want for your future. And they identified him at a very young age. Paid big money for him to come down. And From Brisbane, right? Like, yeah. When yeah. He, was like, he was 16, bro. You know what I mean? And he's just an absolute quality player. It was nice to see him. Have his best game of his career. And yeah, he just controlled that game from the get go, really. I, I don't want to hear about, you know, the Dragons lost Sully in the first half, right? And then they, like, first, sorry, first, I'm not going to even be, be that slack. I'm going to say, when he, I think, first five minutes, I think, or first. Yeah, minute. I think so. Anyway, and then all I heard was excuses Sully, this, that, reshuffle, yada, yada, yada. Listen, this is, the, this is why I say, like, having Shane Flanagan is unbelievable, but I still feel like the Dragons are so, so inconsistent. Like, they can, they love chaos footy. They love Lomax in the air. And that's about it. Like, Blake Laurie is the shadow of himself. Yeah, he's um, really declining. He's really, and Ravalawa hasn't scored a try. I think he scored one try. It's been since the whole season, like the other day, a double or something. Like, all these players that people were praising so much last year are starting to, like, really go, like, mm, where are they? One, two, three. And the difference is when the Bulldogs lose a player, right? We lose the game, whatever. We don't concede 60. The reshuffling we did is, last year. No, I'm talking about. I'm talking about. No, no. Last season, the, the Dragons are obviously whatever. I'm talking about this season. Yeah. When we lose a player and Jamin Salmon has to play at center, at center, it's a big, big problem for us. Yeah. But guess what? We still pull through. Yeah. We might lose the game, but we don't eat the, that many the, points. Yeah, the defense is good. The attack really shows holes. Like it, it's not. It's the attack is the problem when we get the reshuffle, but. It was, everything went to shit for the Dragons oh, when that happened. And it's not, it's not 60, bro, on 60 points. 60 points and is it wasn't bad. Like for, uh, forget, and nobody, nobody saw that coming. And forget 60 points, right? The way the tries were scored, it was just like, try, 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 try. It was yeah. just like, Manu was having a laugh. Yeah, they, all, they, had, they, were, they, were, they were laughing. They were, they, were laughing they were toying with them, bro. And you did not, I did not think that, I did not expect this from the Dragons. I didn't either because I really think like a Shane Flanagan side will never, like they might lose the game. 30 something but Bro, like, this team is so reliant like for its points is so reliant on the hunt and low max combo and hunt had an absolute like that's probably one of the worst games i've ever seen him play like when they combine it's unbelievable when yeah, they when, that's, when that's, they're on that's their, day, their bread and butter that's actually their bread and, yeah, bread and butter well. and when you verse teams that have like if they versus the storm i think they versus the storm this week like um, I think so as well. we'll get and to and tips. that's something that they just, they're just not going to win that many aerial duels. I don't care how good Lomax is in the air. Yeah, He's Coates, losing two bloody giants. tree trot. Tr oh, but Coates might be injured, I Ray, think. Remy Smith. Yeah. Uh, but, they, like, they're playing okay. the show. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that, now, that, that, that's one we've got to see because like, Katoa and Ronaldo, Ronaldo is really good in yeah, the air. Yeah, I think that's their strength. Like That's where they're going to go. Like you said, they're bread and yeah. butter. But I think, but I think as time goes on, Shane Flanagan will make some good signings for the, for the team. Oh, no, this Long term and short term, I think Shane Flanagan was the best option, but he's not a miracle worker. 100%. <laughs> like, I don't... Like, I, don't I, I don't think the Dragons are making an A and I think they're going to really find it tough as the season goes on and like why is Lomax like Lomax has been their best player by far and why is he going to be motivated to play apart from you know when the when the season goes on I think he I don't think he's going to be able to sustain this that amount form. of form it makes sense I, and I agree with you but yeah nah, that was that, bad that was <laughs> bad and I enjoyed every second of it I'll be honest with you boys I got a lot of dragon friends that are frenemies really me and Fred we know what we're talking about but um, nah but shout out to the dragons for yeah, for doing what you do, eating 60, we love it. Let's move on to another team that got slapped because I was watching oh, this. Oh, South got nicked, yeah, bro. You knew, you knew straight away. South got nicked. <laughs> Let's talk about South Sydney. Let's talk about JD. Let's talk about Jason Demetrio saying that Lachlan Ilias will be the best halfback that they ever had, yada, 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 right? Which is all fun and games until the fun and games end. And now you have to be realistic of yourself and understand an injured Adam Reynolds is completely, completely more worth it than anything that we're trying to do. Um, they just got thing, and we said this, bro. We're predicting like I don't even know how he's still a coach. I, uh, think, no, I think the only reason is that because they haven't really found someone yet. That's the only thing I can say. Bro, call up Jim Dimi, call up call Jeff Dimi, call bro. They got Dave Fern. Why not? Why not give him the gig if I, he's their assistant now? Give him like 
So try and save the season because it's Jason Dimitro isn't going to turn the season around. Bro, the, the, I don't the, care who plays well. The players are not playing for this bloke anymore. I think they're fed up. You hear Josh Mantle talking about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm very sure other players have experienced similar to what he has. Definitely. And Mantle doesn't talk. Mantle's not really a person that speaks he's, like he's, a shit talker. Yeah, no, he's always he's a good type of talker. Yeah, you know and he mean? doesn't need to do that to get the clicks and stuff. They're doing very, very well with whatever. Yeah, I know, but this is, he's just telling his story telling from his, story. his position from what he experienced because he's seeing a team that doesn't want to play for their coach and he's explaining why they might not want want to be. And look, I think if this guy's still coach at the, going, and I think he will be, I don't understand why. <laughs> um, I, I, know, I know a lot of people respect, especially the oldies. Like everyone that I speak to would, I would love to see Jim Dimmick in a head coaching oh, role. Yeah, definitely. I think he's at, he's at Manly now, probably content with being an assistant. But I think, you know, he. Is it time for him to step out? Has he coached? He, 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 had, he had coached us before he got Dez and never lost. And I, I think he's the type of coach that could really do well in the modern era. I like his style of football. And I think that's a, a guy that would be respected and I think he's a guy that could do a job but I think South Sydney is looking for someone that is experienced to become available I don't think they want to trust another rookie coach you know what I mean and I think that's why they're waiting they went straight in the deep end as well with JD they, they they're like yeah I'll come hang out Wayne Bennett gave the shout out you know what I mean you got in and the technicality the technicality <laughs> <laughs> nah but yeah shout out to South man keep doing, keep doing what you do I freaking hate you all my heart oh, so. well I wish we yeah, just beat you man yeah I'm burning that we didn't beat him but listen we're still their only win eh yeah. yeah, are we? Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. That's hurt, bro. Yeah, that's resume stuff. Listen, let's talk about the big dog, bro. Let's talk about Cameron Munster. Munster. That, listen, I remember hearing shouts is overrated. This is in the Melbourne system. Cuz when we talk about Munster, we need to, you need to understand like our appreciation for him because players like Munster are just special, bro. The guy's not even hundred percent right. Like we can all agree on that. He's not one hundred percent fit. That injury he's copped. You said it's something very bad. When I read into it, it's actually something that in any moment can just. You're fucking in pain or whatnot, bro. He had a just he had a laugh that game. Bro, he was from in, what he I was, watched, he was in third gear this whole game, and he was bro. Just like, like he's just unorthodox. Brother, you can't touch him. You don't know what he's gonna do if, next. If they did an X-ray of Cameron Monster's <laughs> abdomen and 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 chest, it would, there'd be a picture of a dog there, <laughs> a pit bull, because he's got that dog in him, bro. <laughs> That's my dog. <laughs> nah, what a player, bro. And he's I just love, I love watching him work like that. I love watching him in action and. There's, I don't think there's a more, I don't think there's a more fun player to watch. He's just special, bro. When he's they're magic. on, I don't think there's a more fun team to watch when they're on than Melbourne. Yeah. And when they're on like that, they haven't beat a team thirteen plus all year. And this was the that first, was the first one. time. And that was their first <laughs> Shout one. Shout out to South Sydney. And Xavier, <laughs> Xavier Coates, they're just all playing really well. And I think Xavier Coates might be injured, and that'll be a tough blow because he's been coming in clutch for them, bro. I, th I think two wins you can say Even that, uh, that, of him. against us. That That's kick. what I'm saying. The, the kick, phenomenal. They win off that. The try against the Warriors, they win off that. He scored a winner last week. You know what I mean? He's been coming in clutch and Melbourne are looking him. good. They're looking good, man. And um, I think yeah. Yeah, well, we definitely put the. Yeah. Not, they're not making the eight to the bed. We put the couch. Uh, we sorry. gave him the couch curse, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'd like to apologise. You know, I apologised last time I was here, but I'd like to do it again. Um, <laughs> they are a good team. <sighs> Somehow, I don't. On paper, they are. I don't think they're a good team on paper, or as good as they should be. But they play. The, the good coaching and a great spine gets the most out of. There are people around them. Especially what can Beliak, I say? man. He's unbelievable, man. What, what he's able to well, do... Like, like, I, I didn't watch the game fully, but let me tell you, I watched the mini, but... No, 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 but for that's sure, Bellamy you. was spraying at times, even yeah. though winning by 30. He probably didn't smile the whole game. That's not even something we can win in the same anymore. I think the world knows that. Yeah. Like, it's so obvious that Bellamy is just a perfectionist. And, but it's the reason why he's so successful and he's going to be look, looked at as one of the best coaches. Definitely an immortal coach. Yeah, and Bellamy is a player that... Look, Bellamy is... Sorry. He's a coach that <laughs> won't have a player like... That like Josh Mansour, you know what I mean? You know how people talk bad about their coach. No one will never hear people say a bad word about Bellamy or Bennett or someone like that. And I think that's the difference between there's big respect, the, in great him. coaches and elite coaches and coaches that are not ready yet. Yeah, let's say I'm not going to say he can't be a good coach in the future because JD does seem pretty young, but. Nah, I think he's fucking... Uh, but I don't think he's the right man for this job. Nah, nah, but Bellamy, Bellamy is just unbelievable. Deserves every single flower he gets. You know who deserves their flowers? Since we're going to move on and transition into this topic. Breaking news. Paul Kent. 
Poor Kent, poor cunt, whatever you want to call him, has been absolutely flogged in a Sydney side straight outside a pub. Um, listen, man, I watched the video. It was fucking phenomenal. It was 10 out of 10. It was better than anything you could pop up to satisfy your needs. It was unbelievable, right? And straight out, I've got I to gotta say, I, I love Paul Kent. Shout out to Paul Kent. He took his watch off. He said, bro, let's go. Bali let's watch. Crack. Bali <laughs> watch, yeah. I felt like this was the straw that broke the camel's back, bro. You know what I mean? But He's had in, enough. In, He's had enough, bro. At, what, at Totti's? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Totti's, what kind of happened when we're there? Totti's eh? Roselle? Like, <laughs> why, why? As if this is a place where aggression occurs. No, and Roselle is class. We don't do Western Sydney Come on, Penrith mate. Panther like uh, vibes. Like, I went there. Since he wants to criticise Penrith Panthers all the time for swacking and wrecking. Oh, no. Didn't you see the, uh, the edit of um, him talking to yeah. Panthers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, no, class. Was... no class. Wait, the best one, the, the, no class. No class, but the best one was. Bro, I love best and what's his name? Best sport. Um, what, best sport people know. So. Oh, he's the actual best page, but I love him. Listen, but the best thing, best one was when the fight was going on and the, you couldn't hear the noise and it was just. Da, da. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, for the theme, that was good. But nah, but NRL, NRL, he got NRL three sixty. They call it now. <laughs> Because he got five dumped off the He got on the row 180 and then he got 360. He, he got 180 big time. <laughs> Listen, poor Ken, man. Listen, he's doing a cartwheel, Paul. Hey, shout out, <laughs> well, shout out to him, but he's actually a hard cunt. Like, he's seen boys and he took his watch off and he said, brother, let's have a crack. You know what? That, I want to know what that's was a, said. That's a football player right there. I want to know what he said. I, one I one appearance? Even, I don't, I, look, I, I don't even blame Paul Kent because he probably, the guy probably said something he should have and uh, he probably cops at big time. He does, he does. And he's probably had enough. You know, and you know, listen, I, I've, I've said shit about about him you know what I mean I don't like I I don't I don't blame him for this situation <laughs> fully you know what I mean I don't I don't doubt that this bloke probably it, Paul can probably cops up from this bloke but at Totti's yeah is that, uh, that's, that's like that, the most chill place just at, go eat go at, get some lamb ragu bro and be quiet you at know what Totti's I mean? really bro really boys come on have a bit of class have a bit of shame in yourselves man and if you're gonna have a swag bro just let the boys have a swag don't get tree 60 it's not healthy when you do that stuff Paul Ken and now they're smoking on the camp pack bro what can I say yeah. <laughs> investigation <laughs> it's gotta be an investigation it's gotta be an investigation of this nah uh, man poor, that, that was so good that was poor, actually poor poor yeah poor poor Ken uh, man listen man I think as a pundit, I love him. I think he's funny. I think he's entertaining. I think he knows what he's doing. He's very, very, like, very well experienced in doing what he's, like, free, like Fox Sports is spewing that lost him. Because even when he was gone before, it was a bit, yeah. Uh, he I came back, he Braid, started Braid, riding Braid, up. Look, Braid's done a good job. And oh, I Braith and Asta, I love him. Paul's he gives you that player perspective. Paul's def. I don't like Braith as a commentator, but I like him as an analyst. And I don't mind him as both, man, really. And, and well, that's just my opinion. That's like, fine, yeah. But, um... Yeah, I think Paul Kent's definitely better than Gordon Tallis. Yeah, Gordon Tallis is like a bit funny as well. But Paul, look, he's him and Buzz are like the Skip Baylesses of the of the <laughs> NRL world. They but just for them, they just say a lot of shit, and they usually have the opposite opposite view of the panel of the rest of the panel. Whether they believe it or not, I reckon they just put it on. They have to. Whatever the most to, to, common... to, to create like because you can't have a panel where everyone agrees. No way. A lot of the time. This is the problem with us sometimes because we agree a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. We we have a lot of <laughs> But the we have same. a bit of a laugh. So. But on a on a podcast is different. On a live T V show where it's a debate show, you need two arguments. Someone's gotta bring both arguments up. And I think Buzz or Paul are usually the ones they like instigate that, it. that have to instigate yeah. whether they agree with it wholeheartedly or not they have to take it wrong with it that's their bread and, and butter cops it you know what I mean yeah, that's their bread and butter bro that's what they do like if people still get offended and upset at things then you just go like, the only thing that pisses me off with Buzz is like the Gus Gould stuff like that's the, you know, like, really? they're biased big time yeah, yeah. you can <laughs> tell who they're mates with and who they're not oh, 100% that's, that's the problem you I can have tell with, who they party with really. yeah <laughs> like you know Wraith is literally not allowed to say anything bad about Lachlan Ilias because yeah. he's his agent he's his agent that's right like and this is where you have conflict of interest and bias has come in where you know you just can't they can't give an honest opinion they can't actually say what they want to say yeah for without upsetting their mates or their contacts legal you know why are you gonna be as if you're gonna if if brace has a bad word about one of his clients it's why finished. would they be there why would they be with brace in the first place he's meant to protect them represent them and so he's doing he very very well for himself too yeah, bro, good, bro. On him, good on him bro. Bro. i love brace he has to up. but like when you look at those shows and it, pr pretty much any show, there's always going to be that internal bias, but with 360, it's really, really apparent. <laughs> That's my problem with it. 360. It's literally Skip Bayless and LeBron vibes. 360. I think everybody at one point, when Paul Kent opened his mouth, wanted to be that tree. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> for, uh, I think a lot of people are jealous of that tree. That tree had the privilege. They had the privilege <laughs> of getting freaking 60 <laughs> by, by Kenty. Uh, let's go. Let's move on to the Raiders being faders. Fogarty is missing and the whole faders team, just the Raiders team decides to just collapse. Big he, problem he is, especially. Him and Rapana are this whole the team. Lifeline, man. And Tarpane, I think I look at those three. Even Papali hasn't been like... You know, he's, he's aging, bro. Yeah, like, what do you, and that's, what, we're not blaming him. Yeah, but what do you want him to do at this age? You know so when mean? they do lose like a Fogarty, like a, someone big in their spine, and don't forget, but they lost Jack Wyden as well. Yeah. They've done pretty well without him so far. Yeah, I, I don't think it was that important because he was declining. I don't think he could be a spine proper spine yeah. member anymore. But Jamal, the way the Raiders play requires Jamal Fogarty. Like, he, they need he Jamal He controls Fogarty. the game, bro. He's the His one... kicking game as well has been... When, they, when I don't go anywhere, the guy's got this... He's probably got the second biggest kicking game Far behind, up. like, in terms of distance, next to Matt Burden. And height. His bombs are huge. He's... Him, Moses... He, like, him, Moses and Burden, in terms of getting you, you out of your own end... Big, big meters. In kicks. terms of... Like, if you're stuck on your 20, they're the three you probably want to just get you the hell out of there. Like, as good as Cleary is accurately and decision-making-wise, I don't think he has the distance the and boot, height, The boot that Moses the boot has. That these three guys have. And, and the Raiders are desperately missing Jamal. Jamal was... It was a carry job, honestly. It was like, so many games where... Do you where, see them buying anyone or no? Do you see them, like, trying to get... Because I heard things about them trying to sweep in Sexton, which I don't know if I believe. To be yeah, honest. but Sexton is not going to fix their problems. Like, they need... They need someone with a proper kicking game. I'd be... If I'm them... And they lost that Schneider, man. Try to get enough. Schneider back, but I don't think they. I don't think. The, I don't Pain think they're going to want to get rid of him. Yeah, because he's been doing well for him. Like since Cleary's been. Uh, yeah, Cleary's I don't. Back now, I but. don't see like it's only a few weeks. I think six, five, four to six weeks. Is it more than that? Yeah. Okay. Then then yeah, they're going to really I think miss it's him. Ten weeks. So then they're gonna they're gonna really miss him. <laughs> I think they still got. I don't have to have Matt Frawley still, and that's nah, he I did an okay job at times. Um, he had a pretty decent game against us because he had me Jinning because I remember when we had him in 2018 on 2017 I wanted a neck. It's literally Chris Wood versus Newcastle. That's yeah. why he did to us. Yeah. And, that and, look, and look, I think yeah, they're going to desperately miss him and I'm very happy he's missing for one reason because we versed them Hopefully in we'll that beat span him. and we haven't beaten the Raiders in a long time. So I love Jamal. I wanted him so bad when he was leaving the Titans and I wish him a speedy recovery and I feel like this Raiders team need him like like crazy, bro. Like crazy. Without him, they're literally. He's like, their bailout, bro. And Rapana, man. Like they're doing well even without Rapana. I think Rapana's been missing for a couple of weeks now, two weeks maybe. But yeah, Jamal's like, that last key. If they're missing him, they're gonna struggle a bit. They're screwed, man. So that's that. That's us on the faders. Um, do you want anything else before we get into the special topics? Any any games that stood up? You know, you went to the Penrith Townsville game. That game was hectic. Para. Para. Para and Mike Yeah, we'll get into that when we go for. Well, our, I see our why news. he got. I see, I see why he got dropped. <laughs> yeah. Look, he nah, he scored that. Didn't he score a hat trick, bro? That yeah, game? And, he let in and then he just bro, but his side literally let in five or six tries. And and, and three tries and two indirectly. That brain snap, man. It hurts. It hurts the most, bro. Straight out. Man, nah, he like I, they. they I think it's about time teams realise he's terrible defensively. I think most yeah, players yeah. that come, like, I, I think <clears throat> most wingers are, are like, you can really exploit them if you know what you're doing. Like, especially. Yeah. Watch their line, watch this, their rush up, watch their, like, how they defend. A, a lot of them, they don't know what they're doing. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? They're just in the line and they're waiting for something to happen. Yeah. And Sivo, the good thing about Sivo is, like, he can score you three tries, but then at the bad thing is, he can send you five or three and into indirectly, which is. Uh, pretty crazy. We'll talk about that in the new section. Let's let's go straight into Latrell Mitchell because Latrell Mitchell has come out and said that he wants to focus on South Sydney and he doesn't want to be uh, picked for Origin. Which, like off form, if you ask me off form, I'm just gonna be like, yeah, who cares anyway? You're not even playing that well. But just off what he can provide for New South Wales, is we're still. And I don't want to be that guy that clinches on it, bro, and holds on to it. But he's just so good when he's on, man. He's so good. Like he's someone that can really like. He understands Origin and he knows what it takes to, to play Origin and be that winner or that decider. So I just want to get your thoughts on it because um, you put up something on, or not you, sorry, um, someone who Winston put it up and he's like, oh, I don't want this one. Anyway, it was like a meme thing. It's like, you're not even going to get picked anyway, bro. Now, no. what's your thoughts? Without an app, without a doubt in my mind, he's getting picked if he, if he wanted to get picked. Um, but he got injured in the camp last year, and I think that's probably the reason why. And it's, with South playing the way they are, they can't afford to lose him. Not at all. They haven't lost since he's been dropped. So I think I you think can say centers as well. Like you can saying. you can say he's the problem all you want, 
but they have not won a game since he's been gone. He's not the problem, but bro, it's more no, than he, that. It's there's a lot. He's part of it, I think. Hundred percent, but he's but, not the only problem. But you have to put as a forward pack, as a team, you have to put Latrell in a position to succeed, and he will get you points, even when you don't do it. If, if like we've seen time and time again, last year against Penrith. The guy just comes up with the right play at the right time, 30 metres into inside his own half, and it ends up in a try. Breaks the game, man. Like, he, like we saw it against the Dogs. He legit made one offload with five people inside his own 20. Bang try. And it was a try. And then led to a try. No fullbacks to win that shit. And, but you, I look at it from the perspective is he, without a doubt, is the best centre in a row if he plays centre. And... You're in a New South Wales team where you're surrounded by greatness, great hmm. players, and players that will and a team that will put you in a position to succeed, and a coach that isn't going to accept laziness at all, at all on that stage, and someone that traditionally on the Origin stage is not lazy, and I think if he if he wants to play and he wants to get picked, he will get picked because you when it's Latrell Mitchell, when it's Tommy Turbo. You throw recent health and form out the window and I you definitely. pick them. There are some players, they just because of how good they are in the Origin Arena, they get picked. And you pick, can pick on form with the majority of the team, but I think there are certain players that, regardless of how they play, get they picked. They get picked. Unfortunately, and you know, that might change the, the self-season. Uh, uh, unfortunately, yeah. In, uh, unfortunately, in some past Origin teams, especially during the Mitchell Pierce era, Mitchell Pierce was someone that got picked regardless and we always got effed up because of it because he wasn't made for that arena mm-hmm. Latrell Mitchell without a doubt is made for the origin arena and there's no way you can d- dispute that I get that it was three years ago when he last played but in my opinion if, so he, crazy, if he plays yeah. in the last series because they're picking makeshift centers like Hammer and shit yeah. you're telling me Hammer's going to stop a Latrell Mitchell no. no I don't care who you got in front of you in front of him no one is stopping Latrell at center when he's got players like that around him, you just can't do it. It's like, I don't want to compare him to G.I. Like, I think G.I. is a way better player, but it's a similar situation where I just think when you're surrounded by elite players, you have to defend this guy one-on-one. That It's just hard. <laughs> yeah. We had Josh Morris, probably arguably one of the best defensive centers to ever play, and he had a freaking nightmare against him a lot of the time. So I just think... And you look at the Latrell and into the matchup he's probably going to be playing against. I don't think I think it's a wrap. Yeah, it's easy for him. And I think if he we, wants. I think we win the last two or three series with him in the team. Oh, def- I I agree with that, bro. A form you don't pick him, but like I said, but like I said last week with T, like him and Tommy are just freaks of nature, lad. Like you just need them in the team. Like they're always someone that that's someone that they'll always get picked. Now, <clears throat> will Maguire pick him? I don't know. I think like seventy percent of my brain says yes. Because Maguire loves that shit. He loves a player like that. Loves someone that's going to cause chaos. And he knows more than anyone how good the troll is. Yeah. Like, we all know how great he is. But And, bro, you never know if that 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 game that, that the troll plays just switches him on and he starts to become this freak again for selves and saves him from the hole they're in. So, yeah. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I don't know if he gets picked, but I'll probably lean towards 70%, if, if, yes. If he wants to get picked, he'll get picked. If he wants to get picked. So, yeah. Um, I want to ask you a question quickly before we get into the awards. Who should play centers for in Origin? Who's like some Origin smoky centers? If Latrell can't play, let's say Latrell and Tommy, you're not picking them. Too. Okay, so if you're if besides those two, um, if he's picking on form, it gets a bit it gets a bit tough because mm-hmm. last year he picked Bradman Best and Bradman Best did a spectacular job. Yeah, he was unbelievable. I was he even played for us, you know. That? Yeah, and the guy had a blind that you can't sort of not pick him now. You know what I mean? If you're picking off a last year's, uh, some players are just made for Origin, some people are not. That's right. If I see guys like Gutterson and Nico Hines and shit play and I'm gonna lose my shit. You yeah, know what definitely. I mean? I think if it's not Turbo and it's not a troll, you have to. No more Damien Cook, please. <laughs> <laughs> we had this discussion last week. Yeah. No more Damien Cook, please. I think. Look, I don't like Lomax at center. I think on the wing, he's a smoky. As a center, I think you've got to look at Crichton. You've got to look at Bradman Best. Katoni. Katoni Staggs. And I know Matt just said he's looking at Katoni Staggs. And Katoni is good on both ends of the field. I just feel like Katoni, when he, when he played the Origin, was probably too early for him. He just didn't have that Origin in him, man. Yeah, I think, I think he's got a lot more experience now, man. Yeah, I don't think he demanded the ball as much. And I think that game, that Origin thing, like... Ruined his season as well, bro, because he didn't really play that well. Yeah, Origin does ruin a lot of people's season. As Confidence. Well. But look, 
I think if you put him in the arena, he'll do a job. But you have to give him the ball, bro. You have to get him some ball. You can't just... Like, the Brisbane don't give him the ball enough. Yeah. But I think a Tony, I think Bradman best, I think... Um, and, like, I think Crichton definitely deserves a shout because he's just... Everyone okay, knows if he's strength. on his left side, I think it will be... I think he's playing in the other opposite side this year, and I think it's hurting him a little bit. Everyone knows he's And he's got Drew Hutchison there. Um, I think if you chuck him on the left side, he'll do a job for you. Do you pick Fox? i got to see more. Uh, it's too... Like, uh, you got Brian Thor, and then you have... Uh, Brian Thor is you got concrete. a massive yeah, spot. Like his fit is concrete. You've got a massive available spot there that could can be Fox, and Fox has been doing really well when he has played. Um, Lomax is a guy that I'm looking at and I'm like far out <laughs> you can't not pick him the way he's playing right and Biza now. can play anywhere too yeah like he can play left or right you know what I mean he's yeah. good on, like he's just one of the best wingers of now well, Lomax is putting up numbers in run meters putting up numbers in tries tries he's, he's he's doing it all with not a single smile on his face and I like that in origin demon you know time I mean? yeah I think, I think it will be a really smoky pick for him there I'm trying, to think of another, well. another, I'm trying to think of another centre that could be picked it for the Blues. Bradman Best, Katoni Staggs. Because Bradman has not been playing good this year, but then again, he hasn't been getting a lot of ball. Mm. Last year, he got way more ball. Fuck, who would you go? you got Tommy Luchel, we're not going to mention them. Who would you yeah. go in the centres for New South Wales, bro? It's actually very... Yeah, there's, there's, there's a, a lot of options one, there. Uh, a, I would go with Crichton. And Tango too. too. you got Tango, Tango as well. well. Tango as well, bro. Tango's been crazy this season too. Yeah. So you uh, have so many options. We've spoiled for this choice. Is the, this there. is the problem. Uh, this is a problem. You know what I mean? You're not really forced. Like you're Queensland also, were forced to pick Chris Walsh. In my opinion, in, yeah. In my opinion, you gotta pick. If you're not gonna pick Tommy or Latrobe, you gotta pick the right man for the job. That with the person that's gonna be opposite them as well. You can't pick a slow centre and he's on Valentine Holmes. Campbell you know, Graham as well, man. Like Campbell yeah, but he's, Graham, not he's, be, yeah. he's not going to be ready. But I mean, there's, there's plenty. We have a lot of options, but at the same time, it's very hard to actually... It's like England it. right back. <laughs> narrow it down. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to narrow it down. Um, let's get into the awards. I'm going to ask you and you give me your oh, we got Kiri as well retiring. Yeah, this in the, we're going to the new, that's in the okay. new section. Um, player of the round. I'm going to go... I can't even remember who I went. Oh, Brian Toto. Brian Toto. The guy made 21 tackle breaks in a he's, fucking game, bro. He's fucked. 21. <laughs> I didn't watch that game too, so I'm spewing. 21. Ta- that's 84. I think it's four points of tackle break on Super Coach, bro. You know what I mean? Like, this guy's a freak, man. Yeah, but man. I think shout out to Sam Walker as yeah, well. Yeah, he, he deserves that praise well. And Hines too. Um, I'd go with Cameron Munster, bro. I just, there's not, not one person this weekend that swept me off my feet watching than Cameron Munster, straight up. Unbelievable player. Fraud player of the round. Kevin Durant. <laughs> sorry, wrong sword. Sorry, sorry. Four. Sweep him in four. Uh, Paul Kent. Nah, jokes. Uh, my fraud play of the round is uh, Benjamin Hunt, bro. Ben Hunt. Yeah. Benny boy, huh? Benny Yeah, a bad game, bro. We'd love to see it, man. I'd love him at the Bulldogs. Come past. Don't we can have plenty of bad games with us. I'm going to go Mike Siva, bro. You don't, you don't, um, you don't, like, your team was doing so well. No one ever predicted, I don't know, I didn't predict Parrot to even win that game. Come close. Did you? I played Parramatta. Who did they play again? The Dolphins. The Dolphins. The hammerless Dolphins. I full tipped the Dolphins. But you know what? This Tri Fuller bloke is hectic, man. For a little bloke, I love him. For who? Who? The uh, Dolphins. Dolphins Yeah. The fullback. Yeah. Fuck yeah! It was so zippy. And eh? and and David Armstrong too for the Knights. Like (laughs) they're freaking playing all right. But he was so zippy. Sorry, no wait. Parramatta versus Denny versus the Dolphins. They versus versus Manly this week. Yeah, they versus the Dolphins last week. Yeah, they versus Manly. both times That's what I mean. So, Michael Siva gets my foot of the round because you single handedly brain snap and go off in the last 10 minutes of the game. And you could have easily won that game, bro. Mainly yeah. don't look great at the moment, bro. I'll be honest with you. They don't they, look like they're clicking, clicking, man. Yeah. Like two weeks, three weeks ago was like their best game, I think. It's like, going to be. Look, when t- look, they had a lot of new players come in so, and a lot of position changes and stuff. So, I think teams are going to be looking at them like they know they're a threat so a lot of the players teams are going to bring their A game against them now you know that's right I agree with but that but Ruben Garrick he's fucking doing great at Senna oh Ray. he's so good eh? what a mad player bro he, he could, he's orange, orange, orange smoky. smoky Ruben Garrick yeah he's, you know what I mean he's got the looks he's got yeah, the, the he's Scarface bro Scar- <laughs> Scarface I call him Scarface man <laughs> you need people like me huh <laughs> um, let's go to team of the round bro Oh, I'm ten. going Titans, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm going. I gotta go the. Yeah, I'm gonna go the Roosters, eh? Yeah, they, they, he put sixty. Nah, points Melbourne. Under. Melbourne just did it a little bit more classy. 
Uh, yeah, they just sweeped them. But I think the big moment was Roosters. But for me, it's the Titans, bro, because they've been copying so much flack. They finally got, well, I think that's their first win, right? Yeah, yeah I got They finally I, got their first all win. Right, we've got to talk about something here. Let's go. Okay, because we've everybody detected a pattern. And I said something round one or round two. I am the Warriors' good luck charm. Oh, here we go. Let's go. And we've got the stats to back it up now, bro. Rando, get on it. He's Every on it. single game I have not watched the Warriors play or <laughs> made content of them. They lose. They have lost. Every single game I've watched them, they've won or draw. They have not lost the game. This is going to end. No, no, no. This is, we are eight weeks in now. This is becoming... A, I said, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be able to watch this game properly because of all this family coming over and stuff. I said, you know what? I'm going to chuck this $50 bonus spent on the Titans and Loffy to score. <laughs> I nearly put Fafida and, and Brimson on wow. too, but it was a $50 bonus pay. If You're it was like, a 20, I would have done that, but yeah. a 50, I'm like, you know what, let me just play it safe a bit. But let's see if I'm we don't, a good we luck We don't encourage child. this at all, kids. I don't. This, I just <laughs> said, you know what, let me just see if this is the real deal or not. Of course, the Titans win. <laughs> Because I didn't watch it. And I'm like, this is getting out of hand. So you're basically... John the- Tay Porter's going to put money on what, whether I'm, I'm watching it or not. So you're basically, not. you're basically the New Zealand Warriors good luck charm. Yeah, I, it's just... If you don't watch them, they basically lose. Yeah, so... So whilst fans, so, we're going to start a GoFundMe. We want Fred to be paid every game to when watch I, game. Listen, I am the Warriors good luck charm. I'm, I'm admitting it here now. The stats don't lie. When, they, when I've watched them, they've won or drawn every single game. When I don't watch them, they've lost every game. I will be watching them this week. Okay, I think. What day do they play? Sunday against the Knights. I will be watching them this week. We will be there. We will be there. And watch them win. We will be there. And then it's just Put gonna, your house on it, lads. Shout put out. Put your house on it, bro. Put I'm watching them it. this week. I will be there. I will be square. All right. And the Warriors going to win this week. Hopefully. After a while. Let's go. All right. Fraud team of the round. I got two, man. That's tough. That's Even though Lockie put something else in the thing, I think I gave him the wrong answer, but I got two. The Dragons? Yeah, I got Dragons and the Raiders, man. Because no, but the Raiders are missing their whole team practically. Okay, so we can't put them. But in the, the Dragons, you don't, you don't even score one try. You had like the, the, like that. I was at Levi that was running with the ball. Oh yeah, that was funny. That bro. was that's like that would have that would have been a clip. I saw that today. I didn't yeah. even see that during. That the was day. horrendous. I was watching that live and Hats. I was like, they finally scored. Boom. Okay. Sometimes it just slips, mate. Sometimes yeah. you know, Brucey. I shouldn't eat that popcorn from the longest <laughs> yeah. yard. Sometimes it's just Fred. one of those moments, bro. I hated Fred and his analogies, bro. Um, but yeah, I Who's got, your a, I got the, the Dragons, bro. People just yapping too much. Shout out to the. 60 pointers How, I, went, I went Yeah I went to that group chat There's 240 messages Yeah Banks was just Killing him They were just arguing like, that, That's how it is Come on bro Like you, And they think that We wouldn't beat them That's a sad thing <laughs> Listen Game of the round What are you going Oh the Panthers game Yeah Panthers Yeah game. that was I mad I watched that man I thought it was over And then they come, like uh, Then they came back I'm like what the hell's happening man um, I'll go Wires and Titans bro That was, like, that was a good it. game that was, that was the game I watched properly That was a good game uh, Let's get into the news Before we get our tips And shoot okay. off uh, Luke Kiry announces his retirement. Um, we actually forecasted this a couple of weeks ago. We were asking the question if they Roosters should be looking at a different, you know, at a different way of doing this because I think Luke Kiry one more hit or something is just not going to be good for him in his career. Um, so he's called it quits after what three rings? He's, he's got three rings to his name. One with Big. Souths, a Clive Churchill medal. Like people, I swear, more people give, give a cronk, credit right? to Kronk for that, that final. He where he literally, no where he was literally an on-field coach. Literally. Then Nathan, then Luke Keery got because the guy was playing six and seven in that, during that game. He practically he was did, a phenomenal. He practically did everything against Melbourne, and and they talk about Cronk more, even though it was a crazy effort to even be on the field. Hundred percent, shout out to Cronk. But when you, look, I feel like players like Luke Keery don't get their flowers, bro. And uh, we, that we was loved the, him for so that long. was the Luke Keery game, bro. That's what I call it. That was the Luke Keery game. And you got the Clive Churchill. And you got the Clive Churchill, but yeah, we yeah. don't hear enough about it. He's a champion player, and. Cop yeah. some big hits, man. Cop some big hits. And, like, you start to look at the health of these players. Like, I know we speak about CT and all that stuff. But, like, players, like, he's not that, he's not, he's not a big he's boy. He's a little bloke, he's bro. He's a little bloke, very intelligent, half back, six. Loves running at the line, kicks but, well. But, I just feel like, man, it's, 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 he's announced that on his own terms. And that's what makes me very happy. And I think Luke Kiry, if I, if, we, if I could have someone in my prime, it would be him. Just goes yeah, under the radar, does his job. But he's I, fucking so great at it as well. I don't think he's talked... Enough, We've yeah. Talked about enough. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's rated highly enough. and um, It's sad, but... It's nice to see him end on his own terms when he wants to. And he's a quality player, but this is the the best thing for the Roosters ever. Because I think he was contracted for next year. 850, bro. That's adding to the war chest that they're going to have with Aria Hargraves, Manu, Suwali'i. I, I think he's 
Luke Keery, four four million dollars. I like they never had that before, <laughs> even with all those so players. It's, if it's four million for the Roosters. It's actually eight million. Eight million. So, so who do you think is the question right now? Who do you think they target? I think they go hard for Ben Hunt straight up. I think they go for some union players and try to get them back. You reckon? Yeah, I think they're gonna. I think no, they're gonna. Then, they're gonna hunt union players. I think they're gonna hunt some. Um, Cheap, oh, like they bring him in they're cheap. They're gonna get some guys from England because there's not that many players available here, and I think the Roosters look. Do you go into like a rebuild mode? Because you've got a young team. You've got a just, young team now with Tedesco. Fuck, probably they're losing Manu as well, bro. They're losing Suali, Manu like, Suali. Like, Suali. Next year? Yeah, it's so that's Tedesco. But after that, then you have the question. Like I know he's con he's extended, but he's really the last one of the last aging players on this roster. They need a center. They need they need to get a few. They need to get a grip on this thing as they well. They need to get a few more players, bro. And I think they got you sort of got to hit the, the markets that haven't been tested properly. And yeah, there's a few obviously good talents in England, and I think you they're going to be scouting big time now because there aren't that many players available. Like I'm like, why don't they go for Lomax? You know what I mean? I thought Lomax with their player development would have been crazy, but obviously they don't want him. Fullback for them or like and on the wing or oh, bro. Yeah, we... and I just think they, they, there's a lot of holes they've got to fix. They got to, they, but there's no doubt in my mind that if there's one thing Trent's good at doing, it's um getting the best out of his players. Pep and I think Trent, Trent's one of those. I don't <laughs> nah, really, I don't really good. like Trent Robertson too much, but as a coach, I, I do, I coach. do respect him because when, <clears throat> whenever his team is shot to bits, they always somehow get a result still or some, turn up, you know what I mean? They have a different mentality yeah. as well, but they are very tough. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to Luke Kiri about, man, great career. I wish you all the best in, in retirement. What and, a player. Uh, what a player. Um, another person that didn't go on his own terms was Delphi Nukin, who just instantly, immediately retired. Yeah. And, bro, he's a bulldog. You know, he's once a bulldog, of course, always a bulldog. Yeah. Played for the Sharks. I can't remember who else he played for. Storm. Storm, that's right, that's right. And he was phenomenal for the Storms. Like, bro, like... A player that wears like literally like, that run yeah, that run he does yeah. literally like shows you it gives you the best description of him full tilt always bandaged always cut up yeah like, like, he, for his like team. he's got the he's that head bandage he's gonna be wearing that every day at home you know what <laughs> I mean? it's, like, uh, it's, it's it's literally I can't imagine him without it yeah you know what I mean but what a player man just as tough as as tough as they get bro we literally lost two tough players this week man yeah like literally like. Ah, the Sharks, that's a big hole for them to, to miss as well. Like, that's a big uh, gap to fill. And shout out to him because phenomenal player. Didn't get to go on his own terms, but at least he Much realized... Much like Joshy Jackson. Yeah, at least he realized, like, the, the issue that he could face if he kept playing and he was forced to retire. So, shout out to Delphi Nukenman, phenomenal player. Um, Taruva to the Tigers. This one's going to hit you the most flexy. Another one that another one that the Penrith just let go and immediately we were replaced. I'm they very only confident go. In that. I, I'm very confident that Paul Alamotti is going to be a really good replacement for him. Yeah, he's really. I, I, I look. As, although he was really bad last year, I think also, if he doesn't develop, he'll he was away. also he was also a kid. You yeah. know what I mean? And I felt like the dogs quit on him way too early. And I'm I'm very happy for Paul to be. I don't getting, think they did. I think like Penrith, like when Penrith calls you, brother. You know, and you're poor Alamari, and you know you're not going to get to play first grade footy next year because yeah. it was shocking this year. You're like, yeah, why not, bro? And he did, he played, had a really good game, bro. Yeah, he did. He scored so that he, intercept as well. I like, look, on the wing, whenever he went to the wing for the dogs, we could see the 50. Literally, mm. like, no <laughs> joke, because he was, <laughs> he's he not was a winger. slow. No, no, but I think his future is on the wing. You reckon? You don't think he's, he's a proper he's, center? Look at, look, bro, look at his yardage carries, bro. He yeah. he was better than total per meter, like, per... In that game. Like yeah, in terms of meters per run, I think he was even better, and I think he that's the son, and he got an intercept. He, he's played two games for us and scored two tries. Uh, yeah, yeah. well, I think everybody, I mate, mean, Stain not, scored five hard. tries in one game for you guys. You know yeah, what I mean? It, the Forbes Ferrari, whatever they call it. It, it doesn't, it doesn't really speak volumes of scoring when you're on Penrith. We have to give him a shout out, but man, but, I think you got to give. Man, I'm so happy for him, bro. You got to give really... the Tigers a shout out because they just signed a great player, bro, and I feel like they're building very, very, very well in Taruva. Yeah, I, look, I think. They got two yards. They should not. Have, they should Olam not. And fucking. Yeah, I know but they're, but they're talking. They're not. They're talking about not playing him there. Nah, he's gonna play fucking winger. Come they on, said it, no, no. They, they're talking about play, him playing center. And our uh, center. Yeah, that's that's what the, that's word. I out heard of, fullback, and I'm like, bro, you got Bula. center and fullback. You know what I mean? But nah, he's not a fullback. No, he's no, not even Bula, a center. Bula is your fullback, bro. For, For the, the next don't, five, ten years. Don't do what the dragons do. Leave him there. Let him develop. Let him play fullback. Stop messing with his head. Center potentially. I don't know if it will work properly. I think Valentine, people, teams are seeing Valentine Holmes play, then they're like, why not? You know what I mean? But I think that's a, that's a niche. 
I just feel like Tiger's built very, very big. But yeah, 450 is the maximum you'd want to see him get paid, yeah. eh? Four fi- but I, I don't think, know, he uh, might turn into a freak man, of nature, on bro. Wing, on the wing, he's a hard-working player. I think it's a good signing. Do I think his stats are inflated because he, they don't kick the toe? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but and now he'll get tested properly at yeah, this time. Now, now we're going to see how he does. Him and they need happy. outside backs, bro. They they have the... W- and Junior Tupo's going. They and they, the they have the mainly. worst backs in the league the, the they have like the Tigers have so it's an upgrade do I think it's an Bro, upgrade on Roberts Junior did I say, did I say um, Roberts played the other day Naden 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 yeah, did Naden, Naden play the other day yeah. I actually tripped the fuck out yeah you gotta try assist yeah but I, I actually while I was like is this game like live is this like yeah. <laughs> I was actually tripping out bro yeah um, but yeah shout out but to the Tigers they're building well they really need that I man. like them bro. I like the Tigers man I like what they're doing yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like them this week yeah I'm gonna put a smoke not next year, the year after, they're going to be a top 14. Yeah, this, that's, that's, that's well, it's not yeah, crazy, it's crazy. Is Appy going to be playing in two, three, two that's years? Very true, that's true. That's a big I thing. I feel like it's but all about Galvin. They have, they have ta- uh, Talon De Silva, and he's really like 19 or 20 now, but I think by the time Appy leaves, he'll probably be the one that takes the reins. And even like even that Galvin, it'll be Galvin's team really and Yeah, well, they're, they're building something there, yeah, bro. So oh, shout out to them. I don't know about top this four. Week, we smashes this week that's coming up on our tips. Yeah, this is going to be good. Um, quick one. Waz are going to Vegas. Are we happy about that? Oh, the Waz are going to Vegas? Yeah, apparently, it's like highly, highly, highly likely. Yeah, so man. I, thought, I wrote this at the start of the week. I wrote it down in my notes to make sure we speak about it because we have a great um, support in, from New Zealand. Like a lot of the Wa boys follow us, um, Wa fans follow us and they, they get behind us and we love them as much as they love us. And we said this last year, why the freaking hell is Hilding Manly? Why, send the Warriors, the most entertaining people, the most entertaining team. You got Johnson, you got this. And now you got bloody Sheck. And I think Sheck's there next year, right? He's there. Why not, bro? So I'm very happy for the Warriors. I feel like their fan base deserves to, what do you call it? To be there and to enjoy it and to celebrate their thing. Especially, very important note, we say this all the time, the sacrifice they did for us in COVID time. So shout out to the Warriors. Anything you want to say on that? Oh, lots of Kiwis in, in Las Vegas. <laughs> gonna lots be, of alcohol. It's gonna, it's lots gonna be of gambling. chaos, mate. It's going to be chaos. You're going to hear a lot of... <laughs> laughing. Yeah, boy, in Vegas, yeah, bro. A lot of Manus, bro. <laughs> a lot of Manus in, in any... It's an, oh, man, I want to be in Vegas when they play there, bro. Yeah, you'll get to witness that if Penrith, Penrith oh, do go. If we if get, get announced there, bro... Oh, Ooh, it's imagine gonna, Penrith going Warriors there. game. I think it's, that's what it would be. Wow. Yeah. To be honest. Who do you know. reckon the next two teams are going to be? I think Melbourne will go. The sweethearts of the league. Who knows, bro? And I think um, the Roosters went this year. Yeah. They're not going to send the same teams twice. No, I, no, think, no. I think Paras are one, the one that could go there. Para boring, man. Come on. Uh, not with Moses, Moses. Moses, they're not, yeah. You, you would go Storm, Para, Panthers. Well. I think Storm and Sharks will probably go as well. And that game will be... Because that's a rivalry kind of game. It's always a tough game. You don't want a rivalry game overseas. So. Why not? Because yeah, you rob the fans here of that. Yeah. Cause, come on, bro. Let's be... Um, <laughs> Let's let's move on to the last thing. Is is Sivo escape suspension? Oh, and actually, Preston and the boys are back this week. Kurt yeah, Mann no, and Preston. No, no. You know what? Oh, about Kurt Mann's back. Kurt Mann's apparently back, and, and well, we our boy, team. our brother, Jacob Preston. I, I didn't get to see him at the Knights game. I really wanted to, to catch up with him, and that we couldn't we couldn't make that happen. But busy right, man. He sent me but, a nice message as well. I love that bloke. Yeah, he's an absolute legend, bro. Like, listen, man. When we when when we did this podcast and when we want to get guests on, I always said this to you. Just a quick break from from the. The, um, this episode I always said I want them to be here And I want them to be our friends I don't want to I don't want to try And get a clip out of them I don't want to cloud them Into anything I really want them to come Eat some barbecue Play some ping pong Have a laugh with us Some get snood some, some snood and, and look We have a friend in Preston now We're not best friends I, mean, I can't just say Like I'm going over his house yeah. <laughs> It's a bit weird isn't it But no nah, he's look Someone that reached out to us And like shows a lot of love to us So we, we appreciate that Man, I really want to get Fox on, bro. I want to get Fox, Mansour. I want to get a few of the Bulldogs boys yeah, on. It's, it's, don't worry, man. We've got plans. We'll put it out there in the earth and God will hear it. We've got plans, Happy bro. for that. Um, anything else you want to talk about in the news before we get into the tips, boys? Uh, no, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's get straight into the tips. Flaxy, who's playing? What's going on? Can right. I get the... Right, I'll, I'll, I'll do the announcing. Right. Oh, what did I do? Um, draw. Right. Okay. First game, Rabbitohs versus Penrith. Are we, why are we even talking? Penrith third and plus. I don't know why. I was like, what the hell? Why is it? I think there's going to be another 40 bomb at least. Yeah, I think Penrith will do. I think Cleary's going to have an I've got the captain on Cleary, bro. Is the troll back or he's not back? Yeah, yet? he's back. No, he's not. Oh, no, not one more? He's no, one, one more. more. Fuck, it's been eight. Because I had the bye. Yeah. Had the yeah. Bye. It was three games suspension. I'm going to go Penrith third and plus. Um, especially that game they played against Cowboys was a bit tough for them to get that win. So, bang, bang. Penrith third and plus. Sea Eagles versus Raiders. Uh, mainly third and plus. I think Tom Trubovich is going to have. Like, I'm going to keep him super coach literally for this week. He's going to be phenomenal. 13 plus mainly. Broncos and Roosters. 
this is a fucking great oh, this game. Is, oh, this is gonna be Everyone gonna, is um, back, right? Yeah, Everyone is back. Yeah, and and I got the Broncos. They, I think they're gonna want to win, beat them after round one. Where is it? Okay, it's, in, it's at um, it's at Suncorp. I'll go of Broncos. It is. I'll go Broncos as well. If Adam yeah. Reynolds doesn't pull up a hammy, I think Brisbane go thirteen plus on the Roosters, bro. Straight up. Of course, it's at Suncorp. Right. It's it's Unlimited at home games. These yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, um, Bulldogs and Tigers. This is. I'll be going to this game. So if you see me, don't talk to me, please. All right. Bulldogs. <laughs> Bulldogs, <laughs> Bulldogs, one Bulldogs, to twelve. One Bulldogs, to 12. I'll go Bulldogs. The battle of the hooker, mate. I'll go Bulldogs one to twelve. I feel like Appy's gonna have a great game, but I feel like um, Kickout is gonna unlock some things. Hopefully, yeah, we we'll have a great game, and I want to see Preston get that meat pie, man. Go left, and bro. I'm still nervous because. I have a lot of Tigers, mates, but... I know, I do dogs. too, bro. I do dogs. not want to lose this Yeah, game. I don't want to lose to them, bro. Straight out. Yeah, I don't want to lose to them. And that jumps us up on the ladder I'm as well. I'm going to hear from James. I'm going to... Oh, just yeah, I'm going to hear from a lot of the the, the, the boys that I know I as just well. want to win, bro. Titans, Melbourne. I'm going the Titans, bro. <laughs> 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 I Fuck just, it. Let's I go, have, Titans, BKR, bro, no, Clarky. I have, I have, no, no, because when... I remember, I think Trademark put a video Trademark. out. Trademark. Trademark put a video out, and he's talking about... um. No, when the hell the Titans gonna get a win? Because they had the Waz and everything, and I had the, I would have tipped the Waz one hundred percent if I was watching him. So you talk about an upset right now? And I highlighted the Melbourne game as a potential upset because right. they've upset them before. Say it with your chest. Come on, give us a prediction. Melbourne Titans are playing Melbourne. I love Fre Melbourne. And one sec, I one sec. Titans are playing Melbourne. Fred's got an upset. I'm going the Titans one to twelve. I believe. Okay. I believe, man. But okay. you know what? No one Melbourne. It'll be Melbourne one to twelve, and they just snag it at right at the, at the end. end. Okay, I'm gonna go for Melbourne one to twelve. Probably four point game straight out. Um, Cowboys and Dolphins. If I could fall asleep to a game, it would be this. Well, what do you what... mean? This is gonna be 40, 36, bro. <laughs> no, you know what? No, no, no. Yeah, no. Oh, this is the sleep of the round, cause who are you going? I'm gonna go the Cowboys one to twelve. This yeah, I'll one, go but Super high scoring. No, I got Cowboys thirteen plus. I feel like Cowboys are gonna literally fraud watch us and do this. They're gonna be like, "Look, we're so great." You know what I mean? And then lose next week. Yeah. yeah. Um, Newcastle and Warriors. I'm gonna watch this one because I'm watching the game. Okay, I'm gonna go Warriors thirteen plus. I think they're gonna be very disappointed after yeah, last week. Yeah, man. Warriors thirteen plus. Um, Sharks and Dragons for the last game. Sharks 13 plus. Sharks by 50. The merge, the merge Darby, mate. <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't if be surprised. Ever, if, there's ever, surprised. if there's ever two teams that will merge, it's these two. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if um, Dragons actually win this Walla because it's, Walla, like it's the Dragons. rivalry game and it's Shane Flanagan. Ping pong. Rivalry. Ping inconsistency. Pong. But, 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 shout out to the Sharks. I think they're going to do it. Ronaldo win. double lad. Soon. Love you all. Take it easy. Subscribe. We're almost at a thousand subscribers, guys. And like, I don't think you understand how important that is to us because um, you know all these kind of things matter to us. Like building our family, building our community, our followers. Everything's going off. Make sure you're following Fred. Of course, I don't even need to give him a shout out. He's the one that gives us a shout out. And make sure you're following Flaxies with his vlogs. You want to pop in the camera a little bit, bro? Show some love. You know nah, love? Hey! Yuck, bro. Hey! Yuck, he does bro. all our editing, and we absolutely love him and appreciate him. And like, actually, very proud of you because you grinded hard this week. So. Uh, brother, we, we, brother, 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 brother